Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 56 for Wednesday, July 29th, 2015. Replacement Calendars. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code ARENA when you check out. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. If there's one thing I rely on, uh, my phone especially, it's keeping track of my schedule. Because like you, it's packed. Packed with work, packed with events, packed with reminders, so much to keep up with. So you might as well have a calendar app installed that you really like, that speaks your own language, or places emphasis on maybe a time management style that fits your own approach. In past episodes, I've showcased a few awesome calendar apps that I highly endorse, like Sunrise and Today Calendar. If I hadn't featured them already, they would certainly be in the running today, but I did manage to find three more awesome alternatives, one of which launched just yesterday. Let's pit them against each other in this week's Best of the Best. One of my earliest calendar crushes was an app called Business Calendar. I used it for a few years, but along the way, the design just seemed to get lapped by newer, prettier interfaces. But earlier this year, the designer started over and created Business Calendar 2 bringing forth a revamped interface and even more useful features. With year view here, you can narrow the view down to either six months or 12 months because, you know, 12 months on a Nexus 5 screen is pretty difficult to manage. But any date that you see here is tappable for adding an event or seeing what's scheduled on your agenda on that day. Month view shows what users of Business Calendar 1 are pretty used to seeing by now with color bars that represent each event and roughly what time they fall into. Now, this text button up here at the top turns those color bars into actual text, but again, you'll only get a few words at best, but that may be just enough. Week view is pretty standard, but check this slider at the bottom out, I can move this to either side to show anywhere from one day to 14 days. And I can pinch to zoom in or out inside the calendar to fit even more stuff on the screen at once. The day view has the same pinch control capability, but you'll notice a task pane on the right side that taps into Google Tasks. So you can assign tasks and subtasks from any day inside Business Calendar 2, along with location details for that task, reminders, as well as sharing controls with private contacts. Agenda gives you the handy itemized list of your events for any given day. And then, of course, tasks is its own separate section to manage your tasks outside of calendar events in one handy place. Business Calendar 2 also packs five sharp-looking widgets that cover literally all the sections that the app does. Users of the Pro version of Business Calendar can get a free upgrade to the Pro version of Business Calendar 2 from inside the app. But if you're new to the app, you can find Business Calendar 2 for free in the Play Store with that Pro upgrade for $4.99. Now, not too long on this show, I featured the extremely popular AnyDo app for managing your to-do lists. AnyDo has a very unique and focused user interface, and you'll find much of that style in another of their apps here called Cal. This is a calendar app that focuses less on giving you all the options for things like presenting a cluttered monthly view or even a weekly view. What you get with Cal is a day-to-day -day layout of your events. Really, what you see is more like an agenda view than anything else, as anything from a given day is shown in sequential order. You can tap any event, bringing you to the edit screen, and there, depending on the event itself, you'll have access to selecting which people are invited, 
You can assign a location for the event, complete with one-tap options pulled from your current location. For instance, I'll tap restaurants, and I get a list of local restaurants to choose from here. You can attach a simple note to the event for everyone to see. And finally, set up a reminder so you won't miss that event going forward. The interface is full of big, bright buttons to simplify the scheduling experience. Now, the main screen shows seven days of events as you tap on each day with nice transition animations as you jump around from place to place. There are also random images pulled into the background from sources like Tumblr to keep things looking fresh, though I kind of had a hard time understanding why certain images were loaded, but things looked varied regardless, so I guess that's the point. And down below is this invitations button for checking in on events that you've been invited to but haven't responded to yet. I always overlook calendar invites, so this is incredibly useful to me. It's stripped down for a calendar app, but kind of focused more on your productivity now, in the moment. Check out Cal by AnyDo for free in the Play Store. If you've spent any time checking out alternative email apps for Android, you've likely stumbled across Boxer for email. It's a sharp looking option that's designed to help you manage your inbox efficiently. Well, just yesterday, Boxer unveiled their new calendar app for Android called Boxer Calendar. And it ties into Boxer's email app when you have both installed on your device. Let's start with design. Boxer did a great job applying material design touches to their calendar app, much in the same way that they do with their email app. Colors are bright, events are bubbly, and tapping the floating action button brings you to the new event screen for adding an entry. There you'll find the usual settings like when, where, who to share it with, notification controls, and whether you'll be seen as busy or available during that time. The overflow menu at top gives you your different views of which there are three options here. Week for your typical seven day spread. Day for the top to bottom scroll that gives some extra screen real estate for seeing what each event actually says. And agenda for the chronological list of events that you have scheduled for each day. You can tap on any of those dates at the top to jump directly to it. All this is pretty standard stuff for a calendar app, essential and eh, somewhat stripped down with no full monthly view to speak of anywhere in the app. But things do look nice and definitely modern, and that's a bonus. But the differentiator here is that it works in tandem with Boxer's email app. If you're a user of that app, while you're composing an email to someone, just tap the overflow menu and select send availability. This will take you to Boxer Calendar, where you can highlight slots of time that are open for scheduling meetings or events with recipients. Give Boxer Calendar a spin for free in the Play Store right now. All right, so of these three calendar apps uh, reviewed here, which is your favorite? Was it Business Calendar 2, Cal by AnyDo, or the brand spanking new Boxer Calendar? Well, for me, if I absolutely had to pick one to be my daily calendar go-to, I'd have to pick, yeah, you could probably guess it, Business Calendar 2. It was a crush of mine from a few years ago, so it's nice to be back. Developers took what I loved about the first app and improved it with awesome new features that are actually very useful, along with a crisp, modern design. In fact, design nerds might want to check out an amazingly detailed article on smashingmagazine.com where the developers of Business Calendar 2 actually dissect their approach to redesigning the user experience. It's a fascinating look at what goes into something like this and really makes you appreciate the thought that designers and developers put into redesigning your favorite apps. Uh, a few other notes. Also, uh, Boxer Calendar is set to replace Google Calendar for Cyanogen OS users in version 12.1. So if you run that popular custom ROM on your Android device, you're about to get very familiar with Boxer's flavor of calendar. And finally, I have right here Cal uh, by AnyDo. You can see if you put it in landscape mode, I didn't have this in the review, but if you put it in landscape mode, you do actually get a monthly calendar view, and that works on the larger scale uh, tablet uh, devices as well. So you get a little bit more of extra screen real estate, and maybe that'll tip the scales. I hope these work for you. And uh, why don't you email me and let me know if I missed any, arena at twit.tv. And I look forward to hearing what you have to say. I'll add it to my list for a future episode. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. And that would be Harry's. Harry's is fixing a problem 
that most of us have anyways, paying too much for overpriced razors. You know, <laughs> admit it, shaving isn't very fun. Sometimes you cut or you scrape yourself with dull blades. Razors can, of course, be expensive. Sometimes they run around $4 a blade, meaning a guy who shaves every day can spend hundreds of dollars a year just on razors. Well, there's a company that's fixing all of this for us. It's called Harry's. Harry's gives you high-quality razors at about half the price of those big brand blades and uh, makes the razors in their own factory in Germany. So they engineer them uh, themselves for sharpness, for high performance, and they ship them to you free to your front door. And, uh, you know, because they make and ship their own blades, Harry's is more efficient, uh, which means they can give you factory direct pricing. I have the razor right here. Uh, this is a nice set. This is the Winston set right here. You also have the foaming uh, shave gel right there, which is nice, very nice. And if you use that, you want to use the aftershave uh, lotion and a couple of extra razors in the box to kind of keep you fueled, though. Replacement razors don't cost very much. Um, so my set is the Truman set. It's it's a great deal. This is uh, the Winston set, which is a little bit more. My set was $15, uh, but we're going to give you a deal, which I'll tell you about here in a second. I've been using Harry's personally. It definitely made me realize just how bad the other razors actually are. I don't nick myself shaving anymore. Just kind of a clean, comfortable, and close shave. And the set looks awesome compared to the clunky plastic razors that I've used in the past, all for a great price. I even bought my dad a kit for Christmas, and he loves it too. Harry's costs half as much as the razors at the store. They also have the new aftershave moisturizer that I use every day uh, that protects and hydrates skin. So check it out. Go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase. All you have to do is use the code ARENA. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com. And enter that code ARENA at checkout, and you get $5 off your first purchase. And we thank Harry's for their support of Android app arena. All right. So this week's big app is one that will absolutely appeal to the cord cutters out there, as well as those who simply like making life just a bit easier. Let's take a look. Pretty suddenly over the past few years, my television and movie viewing habits shifted significantly. Sure, part of that is probably because of my two young daughters, meaning I don't have much time to watch pretty much anything. But at some point, I stopped subscribing to Netflix's DVD delivery service and committed myself more or less to an all online and digital lifestyle. Knowing where to find a show or a movie across the myriad of video services can be really tough. I never much cared for Can I Stream It's horrible Android app, so I'm happy to see a new search engine that does it right. Just watch keeps track of the inventory of an impressive number of content providers, allowing you to know what's new and where that show or movie can be found for instant streaming Nirvana. Making it easier, you can actually pre-select the services that you care about, keeping things relevant to your own subscriptions and interests. Just Watch breaks things down into four key sections. First, in the new tab, You'll find all titles added recently, defaulting to today at the top. You can select or deselect any service up at the top, as well as drill down deeper using the easy to understand filters section. So you can do things like kick out SD content or even narrow results to a particular genre or decade. The popular tab shows the titles that are trending among other users of this service. And again, that filter control narrows your results even further. If you like to buy your media or just like a good deal, the price drops section shows titles that have seen a price reduction on your selected services, along with the money that you'll save. This includes rentals as well as purchases. And finally, watch list. This is where you can track your favorite shows and movies. You just go into any title that you're interested in and add it to the list to follow price drops and service availability going forward. Now, while you're inside a title, you'll also have direct one-tap access to watching or purchasing it by tapping on the provider's logo. It's a great way to search all the places to make sure you don't overspend for movie night. Find Just Watch, one word, in the Play Store for free. Now, one thing Just Watch doesn't search for are on-demand titles on Comcast Xfinity service. At least that applies to me because I have Comcast Xfinity service. Uh, I suppose that's one advantage of Can I Stream It? 
But overall, the Just Watch app does, I think, uh, a better job of pretty much everything else. So you should check it out. Send me your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv. You can also you know, post those to subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com. That shares it with me and the rest of the Android App Arena community. So it's double duty there. Uh, the show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight. That's at twit.tv. Just click on the live button. And if you can't make the live taping, the show will always appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.